Hi, welcome to our first video class in Photoshop CC 2018 and today we'll be talking largely about the interface and interfaces of Photoshop, the tools and what the tools are used for in Photoshop. So as we proceed in the class, we get to introduce, we get to be using these tools more efficiently and we'll be talking about the shortcuts to each of the tools which are very important and the reason for shortcuts is basically for you to have to work more efficiently and faster so uh, all those things is what we'll be doing during the course of this class and I hope you enjoy it so first thing first is I want you to follow this class as we build it up gradually so you won't miss any steps so I'll be doing a step-by-step -step process so you follow it by that step so you don't miss any step at all so without further ado let's break it down into Photoshop so I have my Photoshop rightly opened on my system now and I have all these pictures stacked up in my work area and this is because I've already opened up I've used my Photoshop over time and these pictures are my recent picture the recent pictures I edited with my Photoshop so however when you open up your Photoshop you have this particular interface that is new in Photoshop CC 2018 now there at the left hand corner you have recent files you have cc files you have lr files by lr lr photos you mean lightroom photos then you have cc files that mean photoshop files then you have your recent pictures then under which you have create new and you have what open now by create new create new is is helps you to create a new interface or a new document where you can work with largely then when you click on open that means you want to import a picture or an artwork or a creative art into what your Photoshop so for the sake of this class we'll be dealing with a particular picture so I'm going to click on open then I'm going to browse through where my picture is saved I'm going to browse through where my picture is saved uh, okay I think this picture is what I want to use so I'm going to open that particular picture up and opening that particular picture up is a picture of my friend uh, I took of him when we were doing some creative um, class it's called Lexi with tomato yeah i don't know how we named that but yeah we named it Lexi with tomato good looking at me we just drop a new single so you guys can look out for that song is uh what's the name of that song again um samba he's an artist with tomato so it's only me that can shoot an artist with tomato so moving forward so when you open a picture in cs cc 2018 the first thing first that happens is what the picture opens up in what Camera Raw. Now, Camera Raw is not an independent software. It's a plugin inside Photoshop. So, naturally, it's in the new CC 2018. Camera, camera Raw is embedded into what? Photoshop. So, it opens up in Photoshop. And Photoshop, I mean, Camera Raw is where you can easily what? Blend in your auto, I mean, your exposures, your contrast, and the likes like that. But for the sake of this class, we won't be diving into Camera Raw. Camera Raw is another topic for another time. So, I'm just going to click on what open image I'm not going to tweak anything here I'm just going to click on what open image and the image is what opened right there so the first thing first I want to tell you about in this particular software is this that this is Photoshop so largely when you open up your Photoshop your this the place where you have your image here is what is called the work area so where we have our images was called the what work area then at this right hand corner where you have this small image called background is what we called layer panel so in this area is what we called what layer panel and to the extreme left here is what we call our toolbox so the extreme end here is what our toolbox so it's inside the toolbox that we have different tools that we use at different times for different purposes so for selection for moving objects for pasting for removing background that is where you have it now at the top here is what we call layers i mean two two styles so when i click on a particular tool the styles will change that means i can easily browse through different styles of tools i want to use and different functions of the tools now for further introduction to every tool that we have a rectangular, I mean, uh, yeah, a rectangular uh, button at the 
right hand bottom corner of it that means inside that tool there are other tools inside so to review other tools that are inside a particular tool you need to watch right click on that tool so by right clicking on the first tool inside photoshop which is move to we have move to and what artboard tool so artboard tool is used for designs and uh uh print designs but for the sake of this class we'll just be dealing with what our move to then what is the function of a move to as the name implies move to is used to what move objects and images in photoshop so you move objects and you move images in photoshop that's the function of what the move to and shortcut of a move to is what v move v is a shortcut for the move to and i need to understand this particular shortcut so because over time i'll be using a lot of shortcuts and i'll be pressing a lot of shortcuts so you get familiar with them so i move to what is what v now the next tool we'll be talking about is what the marquee tool so we'll be talking about the market tool a market tool is a selection tool which you use to select a particular area of a picture or a particular area of an art that you want to work with and shortcut for a market tool is what m so how does the market tool work or how does them how do the market tools work now i told you that anytime you have a triangle at the right hand bottom corner of any tool that means that you have some other tool inside a particular tool so when i right click on this particular tool i have what rectangular market tool and i have elliptical market tool both shortcuts are what m so i'm going to click on my rectangular market tool and i'm going to click and drag then you see like an some group of hands walking around a particular sphere of the picture right there that means that that particular place in that picture is what selected now to let you know that that particular area of the picture is selected i'm going to click i'm going to click on i'm going to click on this to create a new layer you might click on that in your system to create a new layer and I'm going to pick my bucket too. I'm going to explain that much later. I'm going to click my bucket too. Then I'm going to change the color to black and I'm going to click. Now you note that it's only the area that was selected that the black color I applied functioned with. So I selected a particular area of my photo of my picture, and when I apply the color the color did not exceed that singular place where i was selected that is the function of what the market tool that is the function of what the market tool now moving forward from the market tool is what we call the lasso tool now the shortcut for lasso tool is l now what is the function of a lasso tool a lasso tool is also what a selection tool but a lasso tool as an individual tool gives you the right to do what what is called free hand drawing so with the lasso tool you can easily do what draw do a selection free hand selection with your hand so here i can easily draw a particular place a particular place i want to mark and you see the hands jogging around that particular area where i mark that is the function of what the lasso tool now looking at the top right top left top left corner here there's two rectangles that are white that are sitting against each other and here there's two rectangle one one is white and one is black and they are sitting what against each other so when i click on this particular rectangle here it means that i want to add to my selection so i can easily add to my selection but when i click on this one it means what i want to remove from my selection I hope you understand that then the next one is what we call the quick selection tool the quick selection tool now the quick, i'm going to click now for the quick selection tool this on the default and the quick selection tool at the uh, top top uh, corner here we have what a, a selection tool that doesn't have any sign on it we have one with a plus sign and we have one with what a minus sign so the one with the plus sign means that you are adding to selection the one with what the minus sign means that you are what removing from the selection so let's select a new what a new selection so when i click this area i'm going to 
to extend now to to widen up my brush for selecting i press what the right bracket key so with the right bracket key i'm opening up what my brush that means i'm making my brush bigger with the right bracket key and with the left bracket key i'm making what my, my brush smaller so for the sake of this class i'm going to increase my brush i'm going to click a particular area of the picture i'm working with so when i click those particular areas photoshop automatically selects those areas that it that photoshop itself thought or thinks have the same picture combination as it were so that is the function of that now if we remove from selection i'm going to click the minus sign and remove from selection i can just drag over and the selection has been reduced to this particular point right here i believe you're following then the next one is what we call the what magic wand two i'm going to hide this particular layer here so the magic wand two now to the select what i've already selected here with my what with my quick selection tool i'm going to use a short code a shortcut called command d to deselect so i'm using ctrl d on pc command d on mac to deselect so when i with my magic wand tool now the difference between quick selection tool and magic wand tool is this magic wand tool we select a variable amount of light or we select within a variable amount of light or variable amount of color in a particular picture so any any place and when i pick a particular place in my picture any area that have that that same same picture style or pick colors color style photoshop will automatically pick those area for me so when i pick this area that means everywhere that is picked in this picture has what the same color or what exposure style that is the function of what the quick magic one two then the next two we'll be talking about here is what the next we'll be talking about here is called what the crop tool now as the name implies crop tool is used to what crop now by cropping i mean you are eliminating or deleting or cropping out a segment of the picture that you don't want it's a self-explanatory you crop you remove and you what remove the area of the picture that you don't want again in your picture now let's assume that i just need his face and some little shred of tomato in this picture so i'm just going to what press and hold then drag to the place i want then i'm going to press I'm going to press what enter and then automatically the areas that i don't want from the first picture are what deleted so i'm going to undo this by pressing ctrl z now to undo you can easily go to edit then step forward or step backward so that is how it works you can do a step forward or what step backward so i'm going to do ctrl z so on this note i'm just going to use ctrl d so ctrl z to undo ctrl or z to move another step backward so when you're moving step steps and step backward you're using what ctrl or z but when you're just moving a step backward you're using ctrl z it's a short code short cut, and i believe you 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 write it down as i go so and to move a step forward you use what ctrl shift z ctrl shift z to move a step forward ctrl alt z to move what a step backward and ctrl z to undo what you have done so the next tool that we're talking about here is what eyedropper tool now what is the function of the eyedropper tool largely the eyedropper tool helps us to what pick a particular color or a sectional color in what our picture so with my eyedropper tool if i click on this red here automatically you might think this is red in your own eyes but photoshop did not recognize that as red so i'm going to use my eyedropper so i'm bringing up this color swatch so any color i pick here you see that the color will switch over here so with my eyedropper to any color i'm picking in my photoshop is what changing to that color right there that is the function of what the eye 
zero point two. So I'm going to cancel this. Then the next one that I'll be talking about is what the sports alien brush tool. So the sports alien brush tool. Inside the sports alien brush tool, we have what alien brush tool itself, and we have what the patch tool. So my sports alien brush tool. By sports alien brush tool, I told you that to increase your brush size, you need to what press the what right bracket key. So when you toggle the right bracket key, the brush size what increases. And to zoom in or zoom out your picture, you use what control plus the plus sign. So I'm going to zoom in this picture as much as possible. So I'm using my control plus the plus sign. Now I'm going to reduce my brush size by what toggling my what left bracket key. Because I want to emphasize and show you the the purpose or what the healing brush tool does. So with this, when I brush through this particular place, let me as I just want to remove the tribal mark on his face. So when I brush through that particular section of his face, Photoshop automatically replaced the replaced the tribal mark with the nearest pixels. Now pixels are the smallest units of any picture. So Photoshop will automatically replace the mark area with the available and the nearest pixels. I believe you understand. So the next two here is Ealing Brush 2. So when I pick my Ealing Brush 2, I'm going to increase the brush size. Uh, let me look for dents on the space that I want to remove. So let me say we are removing this one here. Now, um, the difference between the first brush, the Sports Ealing Brush 2, and the Ealing Brush 2 is that with the Sports Ealing Brush 2, Photoshop is dictating where you is dictating for you the best for replacement that means photoshop automatically itself pick a particular place and replace the max area but with the healing brush tool you will be the one to what pick an area you want to replace something with so i want to i want to remove this dot here let me zoom in so you see that better i want to remove this dot here so i'm going to press down my alt key and sample a particular area of his, of his jaw. So when I sample this area, I will come and brush over that, the place I want to remove. So automatically, Photoshop will recognize that I'm cloning from this side and I'm putting it on this particular side. So you can play around with that. Let's say I want to remove this light that is there. I press down my Alt key. I clone a particular place. I put it over that place. Let's say I want to remove what is there again? I think this guy has a very nice skin. So let me remove this right here. I press down my alt key. I clone a particular side and I clone that place off. I press down my alt key again. I look for the place that's closely related to this side. I clone it with the perfect skin and I brush over this area. And that is the function of what our healing brush too. Now, as for the patch too. What does the patch tool do? The patch tool largely, I'm going to reduce the size of this. So by pressing my control and minus sign. So the patch tool, now with the patch tool, patch tool allows you to do what? A free hand selection and replacement of a particular place in Photoshop. So I'm going to draw with my free hand against this place that is bright. Then I'm going to drag it to a place that is what? Black. Automatically, Photoshop will replace that part or try to match them together and smudge them together. But that was not a very nice selection, so I'm going to undo that by pressing Ctrl or Z. And I'm going to deselect by pressing Ctrl D. So let me say I want to just remove this part here. I will select the part I want to remove and move it to the part I want to replace it with, and bam, the dent will be gone. So let me say I want to remove the air here. I move it to the part I want to replace, and like that, it is gone. So that's the function of what our patch tool. I don't use this tool frequently, content aware tool. Now, the next tool we'll be talking about is what the brush tool, and as the name apply, brush. So, what is the function of the brush? The brush helps you to what brush that means to help you apply color or texture or whatever it is in a place you want to put it. It's like a normal brush in your house. It's happy to brush a particular place. Sorry. It's happy to brush 
apply paint to a particular area of your picture so with our brush tool but there are some things with your brush tool that you need to know now it's like we paint in our house there, there's a time you use hard brush there's a time you use soft brush now when you want to lay emphasis on something you use your hard brush that means you are painting very hard now when you want to just rebrush or retouch you're using what your soft brush so at in essence what that means is when you click on this area here with the arrow that is pointing down you can easily set the hardness of your brush to either very hard or very soft then here you can say what increase or decrease the size of your brush so for the sake of this class we'll just be using the soft brush which will be on what is zero percent now opacity of the brush is on 10 here but largely should be on 100 and your system the flow should be on 100 and smooth on 10 percent what that means is opacity means that how much of a, how much pressure are you putting inside how much pressure are you putting when you are brushing but when you are brushing so lightly though your brush is soft but when your opacity is high you are brushing with the best of the soft but when your opacity is slow that means you are brushing faintly I believe you understand that and if you don't understand you with as we go on in the class when we use our brush tool you get to understand more and better so let's see what the brush does we're going to create a new layer now to create a new layer you're going to click on this particular uh, something that looks like a paper at the bottom right corner just after your delete button it means the name is what create a new layer so when you cr click on create a new layer then I'm going to brush with a red brush. Now to pick your brush color, you come here to the foreground color and you click. Then you're going to pick a red color, then click OK. So wherever I paint, I'm painting what with a red color. Now note that the edges, the edges of my brush is what is blending into the picture. That means the edges are fainty. That means my brush is what very soft. But in a place where what the, the my brush is hard, in a place where my brush is hard, the edges will not be what will not be fancy. And I told you earlier that to remove, to, to decrease your brush size, you press down your what. Your what? The left bracket key. So I'm going to brush with my hard brush. I believe you see the difference between soft brush and hard brush. The edges what are harsh. They are just there, the way you print painted them. But with your soft brush, it has a feather. That means it what blends into the back, blends into the picture the way you want it. Then the next one is what the clone stamp tool. So I'm going to click on that. Now the next one is what the clone stamp tool, and I'm going to zoom in my picture with using by using what control with our plus sign. Now, what does the clone stamp to? What is the function of the clone stamp to? And note, because I want to work, any layer you're working on must be the layer you're picking. So because I'm working, I, I want to work on this image, I'll pick the background layer where the image is. And that is, that is the only reason why any tool will work on a particular picture. So I'm going to increase my clone stamp to. As the name implies, you are cloning and you are stamping. That means I'm cloning a particular place and I'm stamping it in another, in another place. So with the clone stamp tool, assuming I want to remove the air that is here, I'm going to copy a particular place by holding down my alt key and clicking that particular place I want to copy and bring it over the place I want to replace and click over it like that. And I can brush over and there you have it. The air is gone. Then let's say I want to remove the eyes. Like I want to blend it. Don't do this for somebody's picture. So let me say I want to remove one of his eyes. I want to remove these eyes. I can easily clone a skin and brush over the eyes. That is the function of the clone stamp tool. So it just helps you what? Replace picture. Hush. This is nice. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Ctrl Alt Z. So that's the function of what? The clone stamp tool. So away from the clone stamp tool is Art Brush. And history brush so history brush and art brush is just for you to go back in history work of what your brush has done so the next one we'll be working with is what the eraser tool and what's the function of the eraser tool it is as simple as the function of what is as simple as the function of 
of your normal eraser that we use in school. So I'm going to make this layer obvious by clicking on the eye button that is just beside it. So when I click on that eye button, that layer becomes what? More obvious. So I'm going to, to, to with your eraser tool, I'm increasing the brush size by pressing my right bracket key. Now when I erase, sorry, because I'm erasing uh, my, my layer, the layer that I picked was is the background layer and that's not what I want to erase. So I'm going to undo that by pressing Ctrl Z. Then I'm going to pick the layer I want to erase. Now assuming I want to erase this part from this picture, I'm just going to brush it towards my eraser tool. And automatically that area was is erased. Is this thing recording? This one that is sleeping. Alright, the next one is what our gradient tool. So our next two is what? Our gradient two. If you're watching this, make sure you drink water always. Help you hydrated. So you can be hydrated always. Our next two is what? The gradient two. So with the gradient two, uh, my favorite gradient two is this. So when I click here, you have different gradient tools. But now I'm gonna pick this particular one. So, what does the gradient do? What is the function of the gradient to? Gradient to helps you to grade. So, you are grading from one color to another color. But with this, with this particular one I have picked, means I'm grading from a solid color to a transparent color. That means, by transparency, I mean that when I brush, whatever is under what I'm brushing will be obvious at the tail end of my gradient. So, let's practice that. So I'm going to start from here and draw a line to the center. Now you see what happens that from here the color is thick and solid but as it goes further it becomes what? Fainty. So that's the function of what? The gradient. So I'm going to create a new layer and play around with other type of gradient tools. So I'm going to pick this. So this one is fading from foreground color to my background color. How do I know my foreground and background color? Now, if you look at the bottom of your toolbox here, the color that is at the front is your what? Foreground color, and the color that is at the back, which is white, is what? Our background color. So, with these two colors, when I brush over to the center, what it does is what? It picks from what? My foreground color and blends it into what? My background color. So, I'm going to hide that particular layer by clicking, by hiding the visibility logically blinding the eyes so it's like closing somebody's eyes i'm going to close the eyes and close this other eyes too so the next one is what blur and smudge too now for the smudge too i'm going to pick my background layer and i'm going to zoom in this image now we're going to see what the smudge tool does now what i just did was move my image around with my hand too so I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain what the hand tool does. But how to how do I get my hand tool is by pressing down my shift key. When I press down my shift key, automatically my tool change to what the hand tool. So with the hand tool, I can press and drag out or drag around my image. So let me use the side of the image to give you an exclusive example of what the smudge tool does. Now, <clears throat> as the name implies, smudge is like when you paint a house and you are using your hand to smudge out the paint. That means you're using your hand to take paint from a particular place, then you are brushing it over to another place like that. So with the smudge tool, I'm going to increase my brush size from small to big by pressing and toggling what my right bracket key. So smudge tool is like this. So that's what it, I'm just smudging that area of the picture. That is what the smudge tool does. So that is the function of what the smudge tool just smudge around a particular area of a picture just smudge it around that is function of what the smudge tool so the next one is what uh, I don't use that one regularly this one is what dodge and burn so our dodge and burn tool by the, the name implies burn burn is adding black to a particular section of the picture while dodge is what adding brightness to a particular section of your picture so Let's pick Dodge. I'm going to press Control Zero. So it's Control O. 
my picture comes back to the normal shape, normal shape.
So first thing first, if you don't have the adjustment layer in your workstation here, you can easily come to your window panel and click adjustments. So by clicking adjustments, automatically the adjustments will join to this panel right here. So the first adjustment layer we'll be dealing with here is what? Brightness and contrast. So I'm going to take back my picture to fit into my scope by pressing Ctrl 0. So when I click on brightness and contrast, when I click that, it's going to automatically add another layer just above the layer that was selected. So here, by brightness, I can increase the brightness of my picture or decrease the brightness of my picture. Then take it back to zero. Then here, I can either decrease the contrast or increase the contrast by contrast means I'm making contrast means you are making the brightness and the shadow more punchy by reducing it that means you're reducing the punchiness of the shadow and the highlights at a time so I'm going to take it back to zero now the next one is what levels so by levels easily it means that you are you are either reducing or increasing your shadow mid-tone or eye highlight so by highlight i mean the brightness by shadow you mean the dark area then by mid-tone you mean the the medium the middle be, between shadow and highlight so this black triangle here implies our shadow this gray triangle here implies our mid-tone while the white triangle here implies what our highlight so when i drag the highlights to the right to the left it increases what the highlight when I drag the shadow to the right it increases what the shadow when I drag the mid tone to the left it increases what the light inside in the mid tone when I bring the mid tone to the left it increases the darkness in the mid tone so that is the function of what our level then the next one is what our call now there's so many explanations to this but as time goes on we'll be diving into this particular this uh to these tools and adjustment layers more properly but this is just a basic introduction so this area from here to here is the bright which is our highlights and from here to here is what the dark part which is our shadow so here at the center of this line here is where our mid-tone lies so when i drag it up i'm increasing the, the brightness in the mid-tone when i bring it down i'm re reducing i'm increasing the what the darkness in what the mid-tone so bring it back to the center and when i bring this to the right i'm increasing the what i'm decreasing the what the light then this i'm decreasing what the shadows that is the function of what our course and the next one is what exposure so with exposure you can either increase your exposure exposure means light and brightness increase your exposure or decrease your exposure so as the case might be offset is like you dealing you you playing around with what your mid-tone that is meaning of offset then gamma correction is a, just a color correction mode in exposure then the next one we're talking about is what hue and saturation saturation is the density of color in your image so when I increase my saturation, the color in my image what pops out. It becomes very much, depending on how much. When I decrease it, the picture automatically becomes what black and white because I have removed color, saturation from what the picture. Then under saturation, we have lightness. So we either take it to the black side to make sure picture black or take it to the white side to what make sure picture white. Then the definition of hue is like you're changing a color pattern in your picture. So with hue, if I want to change, you are, when I'm dragging towards hue, that means it's changing the color in the picture. So that's the function of the hue. That's the function of the hue and saturation panel. Then the next one is what? The color balance. I need to hide all the, all the adjustment layers that we have done so it doesn't disrupt our picture. So by hiding them, I'm just clicking on the high button or visibility button. Visibility, visibility button just at the left hand side of each panel. So the next panel we're working with is what? Our color balance. 
Now, what color balance does is helps you to maintain a reasonable color and balance each of the colors that are in your picture. So you have cyan to red. Cyan is the opposite of red. Green is the opposite of magenta. Then blue is the opposite of what? Yellow. In, in Photoshop, yellow means warm, warm. Blue means cool. So you see that it is warm or it is what? Cool. That is a function. Then magenta or green help you with your skin tone. Then cyan or what? Red. That's how you balance what your color in what Photoshop. That is about color balance. So I'm going to hide that. Then after color balance, I'm going to we'll be talking about what black and white, as the name implies, black and white. So when immediately you click on it, it automatically turn your picture to what monochrome, which is black and white. So I'm going to hide that too. Then the next one is what photo filter. Then with photo filter, you can I I hide I mean add color. You can add color that you want to filter your picture with. I can add color to be blue. Then when I increase the density, density is like opacity. That means you're increasing the um, the the impression that you are the color is going to be added with, or the intensity or density as the case might be. So here you can add filters. There are filters that are already that already come with Photoshop. You can add filter. Can add a cool filter. And I told you that blue means what? Cool. So because I'm adding a blue filter, the picture becomes cool. Then you can add orange. You can add uh, sepia or any color that you want. So I'm going to hide that too. Then the next one is what? Color channel. Uh, color mixer. So here you can easily mix different colors, colors together to give you a particular what i mean particularly what you want there's color mixer then the next one you'll be talking about is invert so this is just helping invert the old color in your image i don't know what this is used for but you can just use it to create art as you want i hardly use it i've never used it before either of the two now the next one is what properties so here you can easily merge merge together the properties of your image so you know where the where shadows are, you know where brightness is. So with property, it simply bring out where thick shadows are, turn them to pure black. Where colors are prominent, turn, turns them to red. Where colors are not too prominent, turn them to yellow. Where light is prominent, they become very what very bright. That is a function of what prop uh, polarize. So the next one is what threshold, then selective color. And by selective color, here you can work on individual colors inside your picture. So when you pick red, you can toggle around what, your, what you want in your red. You can increase the magenta inside your red. You can increase the yellow or decrease the yellow inside your red. Then you can pick different colors for different purposes that you can just tweak around. And uh, next one is what? Gradient map. I told you the function of the gradient too. But now this is an adjustment layer called what? Gradient map. So with your gradient map, you can pick different gradients to suit into different picture. We'll be using a lot of this gradient map as we edit because largely I use gradient map for color grading and for so many other other purposes. So I'm going to hide all we have added to the picture. All we have added to what? The picture. So now we have talked about everything that has to do with adjustment layer we'll talk about our layer panel and we've talked about our two box then we'll talk about our work area this is our work area the place where our picture is is our work area and at the end of the day there are so many other things you, want, you can do let me assume you want to save this picture probably you are done editing this picture you easily come to file then you are you go to save as then you pick the directive of where you want to save the picture you can either save the picture as a PSD file, which means that you want the picture to be saved in Photoshop documents. That means every layer that you have stacked up inside this particular file, when you open it up again in Photoshop, all the layers will be there. Or you can go to the drop down menu and save as what JPEG, which is the general picture format. So you can save as JPEG, PSD, PNG, or any kind of format you want. But for the sake of this class, you can either, either save as JPEG or PSD. 
and that is it about that and shortcut to save is what control shift s guys save us then to just save picture directly just use your word control s and that is that about that so go through all these ones and uh, the assignment for today is simple this picture will be attached or be given out to the files that will be given to you then i need you to go and master all the shortcuts in our tools and all the shortcuts inside photoshop now to get the shortcuts inside photoshop easily go to file is it right now easily go to file then go down and press keyboard shortcuts so the alternative to that or the shortcut to that is alt shift control k so when you press that you can easily go one after the other to see all the shortcuts that are available to open a new file is control n to open a picture is control o to browse in bridge bridge is an adobe software it's called alt alternate control o then you just look at those shortcuts like that and master them and just you might not cram them but with time as you play around with them it becomes more obvious each the purpose of each and every of these softwares i mean of these shortcuts and i need you to master and cram the shortcuts of each of the tools and to know the shortcuts of each of the tools just go to the tool and right click on it at the edge here you will see the shortcut so as for move is v as for market tool is m as for lasso is l as for magic one is w as for crop is c as for eyedropper is i as for healing brush tool is j as for stamp is s as for brush is b and this one's are eraser is e gradient is g smudge is i don't know and is uh, dodge and bone is uh, dodge and bone is o text is t and is h uh, and the last one which is z is what zoom that is the shortcuts a lot of the shortcuts comes with their name and just play around them like that and that will be the end of today's class see you in the next class